Hi, welcome to Ouch, I'm a Soul, a podcast to keep us spiritually strong by contact with the ancient wisdom of India. I'm your host, Cyril War, also known as Chandrasekhar, and today we're at episode number two of our series, Praying in Bhakti, looking at famous prayers found in the Bhagavad Purana or the Srimad Bhagavatam. And we began this series by going directly to the prayers of Queen Kunti, uh, this, uh, the mother of the, f- the Pandavas, the five heroes of the, of the epic Mahabharata, the mother of Arjuna, to whom Krishna speaks, the, the Bhagavad Gita. And um, there's a whole series of her beautiful prayers found in the first canto, uh, chapter 8 of the Bhagavad Purana. And uh, these prayers, as you'll see, are, are quite philosophical. And uh, we'll hop right into her second prayer, which corresponds to text number 19, where she goes as follows. She says, Maya javanika channam agya dokshajam avyayam nalakshase mudhadrisha nato natya dharo yatha, which is translated by Srila Prabhupada, the founder of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, as follows. I always use this translation because it's the one I'm most used to and which is also the one that's mostly read uh, on planet Earth, so might as well. Uh, and excuse the background noise, I'm in Sayulita, Mexico on a terrace, so you've got uh, mu- you know Mexican music in the background and dogs barking, and right now you've got a helicopter <laughs> flying. So this is the translation. Being beyond the range. I'll let it fly here, it sounds like Vietnam, right? I mean, I've never, I've never been to the Vietnam War, but it reminds you of, of Hollywood Vietnam movies. So, Queen Kunti says to Krishna, Being beyond the range of limited sense perception, you are the eternally irreproachable factor covered by the curtain of diluting energy. You are invisible to the foolish observer, exactly as an actor dressed as a player is not recognized. So here are some pretty important philosophical points. Um, and let's go by them. The first one is, is quite famous. This line, Maya Javanika Channam. Um, that Maya, you know, the, this diluting energy, Javanika curtain, Achannam covered by. Um, so the idea is that God is covered literally or symbolically by a curtain of illusion. Uh, that 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 forbids us, and when I say us, I'm talking about us as you know spirit souls encaged in physical bodies who are perceiving reality uh, through our senses, through our eyes, through our nose, through our ears, through our touch, through our taste, and and so there's this principle or this premise that's established here by Queen Kunti that God, by definition, lies beyond sense perception, exists beyond sense perception. Um, there's a famous verse that is often quoted by, um, by saints in the Vaishnava tradition. Um, it's a verse that I learned from one of my mentors, um, Jeff Solomon or Brigupati Prabhu. And, um, and I like to quote it too, and it's really relevant or apropos to this point right here. It, it goes like this. Atakshi Krishna namadi na bhavet grayam indriyai sevon muke hi jiva dosvayam eva sfuratyada. Uh, that you know, Krishna, or God's uh, holy name, his form, his characteristics, his pastimes, etc., are all beyond the purview of sense perception. They, they, they exist beyond sense perception. So the same thing that, that is said in that verse is repeated here uh, by Queen Kunti, by saying that you, know, the, 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 um, you are covered by the curtain of diluting energy, right? Um, there's an analogy that's given that I like, and it's the analogy of, you know, trying to access some, some website or trying to access some, yeah, some, 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 let's say, page or some sphere of a government website or some private company's website. You know, unless you're granted uh, a password, you can't access that sphere. You can't access that domain or you can't access that uh, that you know, digital territory, let's say, unless you're gifted or granted the password, right? Unless you have that password, your senses cannot reach beyond that, you know, that firewall or whatever. It's just impossible. You try all you might, 
unless you have that password you can't you can't reach it you can't go beyond it so in a similar way you know we think or souls down here think uh, and that's us <laughs> you know that that we can actually we see all of reality or we see reality very well but actually actually what we're really just perceiving is whatever our limited senses are able to perceive and first of all that's that's all matter it's all matter right in in the bhagavad gita um krishna tells arjuna about this whole world as being you know summed up in in five elements you know earth water fire air ether then there's you know a few subtle elements like mind intelligence ego um but but aside from these you know five plus two or three um there's a spiritual reality there's a spiritual reality which which krishna calls brahman he calls that brahman in the bhagavad gita the famous brahman that you know non-dualists or advaita vedantists try to or want to or have as an objective to merge into that stuff that you know non-material stuff that you know theoretically we are all made of and, and god is made of right and and the spiritual world or the kingdom of god is made of so that brahman whether it's just the impersonal energy or especially you know the personal form of god and and the personal form of souls including us individually that's beyond sense perception that's beyond sense perception and therefore queen kunti here is giving the analogy of an actor on on stage right um and and uh, you know she says you are invisible to the foolish observer exactly as an actor dressed as a player is not recognized so you know you have an actor that comes on stage and if he's you know really or she's really well dressed and and has a lot of makeup on or a mask <coughs> excuse me you can't really recognize who who she or he is so similarly um similarly you know we're 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 covered by this diluting energy which which uh, blocks us from from seeing god you know uh, let me quote to you a, a short few sentences from the commentary here the commentary by Srila Prabhupada the founder of ISKCON and um, and he makes basically he makes two points the one the first one I'll just summarize and the second one I'll actually quote verbatim okay so so the first po- point he makes here is that <clears throat> you know in regards to Krishna or God being like an actor uh, not recognized even though he's on stage in front of you uh, he, he, he spends like a whole paragraph saying that you know when Krishna was was on earth he performed all these superhuman acts there's all these scriptures that establish Krishna as God. He himself spoke as such in the Bhagavad Gita. There's a whole litany of, you know, of saints and sages and commentators on scriptures who, who establish that Krishna is indeed the Supreme Person, the Supreme Lord. And yet, and that's the point that Prabhupada's making, and yet, and yet, there's still a bunch of people who are just, what does he say? There's a class of men with demoniac mentality who are always reluctant to accept the Lord as the supreme absolute truth, right? This is partially due to their poor fund of knowledge and partially due to their stubborn obstinacy, which results from various misdeeds in the past and present, right? Such persons could not recognize Lord Sri Krishna even when he was present before them. So the same principle applies, whether God's in front of you personally as allegedly he was 5,000 years ago approximately on this planet or whether you know you accept that he's uh, present in his holy name for example and that's why you know you chant his name with with devotion and attention uh, assuming believing that he's fully present in his name in either case you know there's a good chance that you you just won't recognize him he may be right in front of you as he was for many, 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 many people 5,000 years ago and people didn't recognize him as God. And similarly today, you can chant his holy name and be totally bored and feel no reciprocation from that sound vibration and conclude, yeah, this is just mundane sound vibration, ordinary sound vibration. Sorry for the cracking sound. I'm on this wooden chair. Um, ordinary sound vibration or, you know, God's, f- uh, yeah, or, or Krishna 5,000 years ago is just an ordinary person. As a matter of fact, interestingly enough, in the Bhagavad Gita, right, he says this famous verse, um, um, fool, I forgot the Sanskrit, avanjanantima mudha manushim tanumashritam, right, I, fools deride me when I descend in, in my original human-like form, 
fools deride me. So even 5,000 years ago, Krishna, out of the, you know, the 700 things that he said in the Bhagavad Gita, 700 verses, which is nothing when you think about it, he included one verse to, to, say, to make a commentary that, you know what, like, even when I myself am here on earth, people, you know, fools deride me. They deride me. Deride means to make fun of, to condescend, to look down upon, to, to ridicule, to trivialize, right? So that's the, and why? Quinn Kunti is telling us, because God is, has this sort of, not protective, but in a way protective. Like and the reason why I say protective is that, for example, when you go to Vrindavan or Mayapur, these holy places in India where Krishna allegedly appeared 5,000 years ago, uh, there's this common understanding there that um, there's, a, there's a, a thin layer of maya, of illusion, covering these holy places, these dhams, um, in order to precise, precisely to delude, to delude, you know, atheistic people, atheistic people with atheistic mindsets or demoniac mindsets who may come and visit those places. And, you know, because of their mentality, after all, Krishna says, as one surrenders or approaches me, I, I, I reward him or I reciprocate accordingly. So if one has a nasty attitude approaching the, the holy dham of Vrindavan, well, Krishna will reciprocate that nasty, envious attitude by, by covering one's vision so that indeed one feels or experiences nothing transcendental, nothing spiritual in those holy places and, and concludes, as, as Prabhupada often said back before Vrindavan was, you know, ultra, well, not yet ultra, but getting there, you know, commercialized and industrialized, that all you'll see is just open sewers and, and pigs and, and dirt on the floor, you know, an ordinary village with nothing special about it. Well, no, it actually is special. It actually is transcendental. It actually is the, the kingdom of God on earth, the embassy of the spiritual world, if you have the right vision, if you have the right perception. Um, another verse that comes to mind is the verse from the Brahma Samhita, Premanjana Churita Bhakti Vilochanena. That, you know, if your eyes are anointed with, with the salve of love, of devotion, then... And, and, and you know, remember I, I told you about this verse that my mentor, Brigupati, used to quote a lot. This verse from, I think it's from the Samupanishad, I forgot which one. Atakshi Krishna nama na bhavit gramindriyai. That, you know, God is not perceivable with the gross, blunt material senses. Well, the second part of this verse, the second part of this verse gives us that password. That password that we need to access that higher realm of reality that password that we need to perceive God. And so that second part of the verse goes, uh, uh, which means, but if you engage in bhakti, if you engage in bhakti with, you know, uh, yeah, if you engage your senses specifically in bhakti, in devotion to Krishna or God, and beginning, interestingly, with the tongue, and I'll explain that, then, God's name, God's form, everything about God becomes revealed to you, becomes revealed to you. And, and what does that mean to, to you know, engage your senses in the Lord's service with your tongue? It means to chant Hare Krishna, <laughs> to chant, more generally speaking, God's holy name, right? Remember that in the age of Kali, the age that we're supposedly living in, the Vedic literatures, at least the Vaishnava scriptures, excuse me, uh, 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 emphatically, you know, say that the, the process of bhakti, the process of devotion, of self-realization for this age in which we live in is, you know, above all, the chanting, the congregational chanting of Krishna or God's holy names. And so how do you chant God's names? You, you chant God's names with your tongue. <laughs> so it all begins with your tongue by vibrating that holy sound vibration. And also, of course, also by eating food offered to God. Prashadam, as we call it. So when you eat prashadam, then uh, that food is, you know, theoretically, allegedly. I say those things like theoretically, allegedly, because, you know, I don't want to speak beyond my realization. I have faith in those things, but I'm not, you know, I'm not sure. I, I don't know these things. I just have faith. So that's why I say theoretically, allegedly, according to scripture. They're offered to Krishna and, and supposedly, theoretically, they're blessed with Krishna's love, Krishna's blessings, God's mercy. And by coming in contact with that blessed food, you become purified. Very much like the, you know, the bread the, the, or the body of Christ, the ostia in the Catholic, uh, in the Catholic tradition. So, so, atak Krishna Krishna nabadi nabavid gramindirai sevon muke hi jiva dos fayam evas So, by engaging in bhakti. So, the key here, the secret is bhakti. When you give up an envious, challenging attitude, not that you become stupid, but you stop, you know, you, you kind of check your own envy of God and 
or at least become aware of it and acknowledge it and pray that, you know, he takes it away from you. Uh, he purifies you of that. And, and when you approach God and, and, and in this age, the chanting of God's name in a humble, submissive spirit, um, and, and you, you offer your food to God, you eat it with, with respect, um, you may, you know, offer an incense or a flower to a picture or a deity of Krishna. You, you know, there's different things you can do in terms of bhakti, of service to Krishna. But, you know, the, rain, the, the most important thing, the most important service is chanting his name on a regular basis. When you do that, then lo and behold, uh, Krishna reveals himself. God reveals himself. So the, the curtain of Maya, coming back to this verse from Kunti, the curtain that she talks about is lifted. The curtain of Maya is is lifted and there you know you see God in all his glory right let me read you remember I told you I would read the his second the second point that Prabhupada makes in this verse in his commentary so here's his ver the verbatim second part he says <clears throat> a difficulty is that those who depend more on their imperfect senses cannot realize God as the Supreme Lord such persons are like the modern scientists <laughs> They want to know, I mean, Prabhupada took a jab at, at, at modern science, or at this scientism, you know, the, the sort of beyond your jurisdiction claim, you know, in the physicalist sense of the term of, of scientists who, you know, who make these ultra-reductionistic claims about reality way beyond their paycheck. So they want to know everything by their experimental knowledge. But it is not possible to know the supreme person by imperfect experimental knowledge. He is described herein as adhokchaja, or beyond the range of experimental knowledge. Mm. So, you know, coming back to the same point, but I like how he makes a little remark about what we would call the physicalist approach today. Um, you know, this idea that, that all consciousness can and is reduced to nothing but, you know, interactions of neurons and protons in the brain and can be fully explained by, you know, the laws of physics and, and, and biology and chemistry, right? But as he, as he says here, you know, all our, our senses are imperfect. So if we assume that our senses, our sense perception is imperfect to begin with, then, then naturally or logically what we perceive with, you know, defective senses will also be defective. Right? And hence the, the importance of a descending type of knowledge, a revelation of, of knowledge, a revelation of reality which again depends on, on an attitude, an attitude of what? An attitude of devotion, an attitude of, of humility and love and submission towards God. So coming back to the verse, I'll read it again. Beyond, being beyond the range of limited sense perception, right? We, we saw that. You are, etern you are the eternally irreproachable factor. It's just, so ultimately, God is faultless. You can't reproach God for anything. God is perfect by definition. There's nothing reproachable about God, right, by definition. Even in his, you know, esoteric or let's say confidential dealings with his intimate associates, as we say, you know, liberated souls who have very intimate relationships with, with God, you see God, you know, playing tricks on, on, on them or, you know, getting them angry or getting, getting them frustrated or, you know, laugh, you know, laughing with them or playing... But those activities are to be considered the highest, most, you know, confidential lila or pastimes of God. And they're totally irreproachable. Totally irreproachable. You are invisible to the foolish observer, Queen Kunti continues. So we, we covered that, right? The foolish observer, you know, where is God? Show me God, you know? Well, no. Do you have the qualifications to see God? Do you have the right attitude? Exactly as an actor dressed as a player is not recognized. Right. So when that actor takes off his mask or let's say he's behind the curtain and the curtain lifts, then then you see the actor, then you see the person. Right. So either, you know, he's behind a, uh, he's behind a curtain. When the curtain goes up, you recognize him or he's in front of you. But he's got a mask on or you've got some sort of filter on your eyes. When you take off that filter, you see you see the actor. You see you don't see the actor you, when you see the person playing X or Y role. Right. So what does that mean for you? Well, that means that, you know, if you, have, if you have a little bit of doubt whether God exists or whether, you know, Krishna is God, then you should remember this verse. You should remember that Queen Kunti is telling you, hey, look, you know, you can't, you know, don't expect to see God 
just like that. You need to be qualified. And, and you should remember, okay, the qualification to see God is bhakti. So I should continue chanting Hare Krishna regularly. I should continue having a, a, you know, a strict sadhana, as we say. I sh- you should continue to wake up early. You should try, you know, continue to be up during that sacred or special Brahma Muhurta time. Unless you're like living in St. Petersburg or, you know, some <laughs> or the North Pole or something where, you know, sunrise is at three in the morning or something. But generally for most of us, you know, catching those early morning hours, especially in the winter, are, are, are p- is possible. So you should really, you know, make it a point to remember that, you know, your access to re- God revealing himself to you doesn't really ultimately depend on you. Like it is a, a question of, of, of revelation whenever God you know, wants to, he'll reveal himself to you. But you sh- have to put in your part of the contract. You have to show God that you're really serious uh, to know him, you know, and you want to see him. So wh- what, what can you do besides, you know, being, as we say, a strict devotee, a strict practitioner? So, you know, really make it a point to, to, to chant good rounds, as we say, to read scripture on a, on, on a daily basis, yes. And and to to follow these four principles that that you know that that you're supposed to follow as as followers of Krishna, that no illicit sex, no no sex outside of marriage, and, and even then in marriage it's you know regulated and you know ideally just for procreation uh, and no intoxication, no meat eating, no gambling. These four you know prohibitions are there to keep you in the mode of goodness, so that you can you know have an easier time at chanting Hare Krishna really and having Krishna reveal himself to you. So that's a really important thing you, you got to remember. Like, don't, like Prabhupada said, you know, you should remember Prabhupada saying, you know, work now, samadhi later. You know that, I don't know if you know that. One time, is, that's a famous Prabhupada saying that we heard so many times Prabhupada disciples mention, how he said, like, you know, work now, samadhi later. In other words, now it's time to, you know, stick to the basics. Get those, you know, 16 rounds as we do in ISKCON. Uh, or, you know, basically get your sadhana down, whatever prescribed number of Hare Krishna mantras you're, you know, you, you, you've made a vow to chant, then do that well, you know, and, and follow those four regulative principles well. And, and, and you know, do quality hearing and chanting, do sankirtan, you know, congregational chanting together, you know, concentrate on how to spread the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita to other people wherever you live. You know, those kind of basic activities, that's what, you know, Prabhupada used to call work. So work now, samadhi, as you know, the term samadhi means, you know, full absorption in, in the divine and particularly in Vaishnavism and in Krishna and love of God. That, you know, that'll come automatically. That'll come later. But don't, wor- don't worry about that. Wor- you know, worry about working. <laughs> in other words, having a good sadhana. And, so, you know, it's, it, it, ironically or paradoxically, when you have that, you actually have a happier life, a more peaceful life, right? So that's what we have. If we, if we want to have God reveal himself to us, then uh, we should remember what Queen Kunti is telling us here. And we should remember that, you know, the, the, the key factor for having God or Krishna reveal to us, himself to us, is bhakti, is devotion, is a humble, submissive attitude and, and showing God that we really want to, you know, we really want to see him. We really want to have his darshan. We really want him to reveal himself to us in our life on a, on a constant basis. Thank you for listening and I uh, wish you all the best. <laughs> And until next time, Hare Krishna. Om Tat Sat. Krishna Kirtan Gana Tanapano Premam Tamanidhi